Hi everyone, Terry Bemis here with Watersong Creek Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I have been for the last couple of weeks getting ready for a rather large craft show in Daytona Beach. And I don't do craft shows too often anymore, so I'm kind of excited to get out there and talk to the people again and meet the public and so forth. But every day I have been focusing on a different type of artwork. And today I'm focusing on what I call the littles. And those are trinket trays and coasters and all kinds of tabletop things that um, you want to have when you do a craft show or a fair or a Saturday market or anytime you're out in the public and even online. You want to offer big things and you want to offer little things. You want a variety of prices uh, so that you uh, accommodate what people want. So today we're focusing on the littles, the trinket trays, and I've got a whole big tray of them ready to go. I've got little rounds, bigger rounds, tr uh, the heart shape like I showed you, and little miniature rectangles. I've put a little bit of sand in them. I'm going to use just alcohol ink so they're translucent. I've got some uh, turtle and mermaid charms for a little sparkle, and as always, my ever trusty Pro Glass 1000 resin. Um, it's the only resin I use. You've heard me talk about it lots of times, and I will continue to do so because it's amazing. Uh, you can get it at fiberglasswarehouse.com or on Amazon. Okay, I'm going to go mix up some resin, and we'll get started. Okay, I have mixed up eight ounces of resin, and I have added my alcohol inks. And to be honest with you, I'm just not quite sure that the color is as dark as I need it to be. What I've got right here is um, Mermaid Trash White Lace. This is pigment paste, and I use it for all my ocean waves. I love this stuff. I really depend on it almost exclusively. And I've just got a tiny bit mixed up in my little one ounce plastic shot glass because I'm gonna use a toothpick to drag it around and um, simulate some ocean waves. I'm using Bria Reese alcohol inks. They are very pastel, and if I'm being honest, I don't know if they're gonna be dark enough. I've put three drops in some and five drops in others, uh, but I am using lavender, ocean green, pink, sky, and I'm using uh, Ice tint resin, it looks like it's low light. And the low light and the ocean green are way too similar for my tastes. So I might have mixed up some that are a little too close in color. But I'm just off camera here, I'm using my blowtorch to pop the bubbles before I start to pour. Um, and the best way to determine if, see that looks very, very light. And when it comes off of the craft stick, it looks even lighter. I'm not sure that this is dark enough for me yet, but the only way to find out is to put a little in the tray, and there, if I'm not off camera here, this tray is so big. Um, I think I need a little more color in there, and that is the blue. So I'm just going to add several more drops, and I like to do it one drop at a time because I don't want it, I want it to keep the translucency. I don't want it to uh, be where you can't see through and lose that ocean feel. I did measurements on these and it said six ounces would be enough to do all of this. I don't think I believe that. I'm not even sure eight ounces is gonna be enough to do all this and covering sand makes it even more so. So I'll probably have to mix up another batch and that's okay, that's all right. Long as you mix small batches at a time and you've got leftovers, that works. Um, it's when you mix up too much that you have a problem. Uh, that's kind of pretty. Um, when you have, when you mix up too much, 
as a rule, what as a resin artist you always want to do is have a mold of some kind at the ready to use your leftovers because you never want to waste it or throw it away. I have a little mermaid and a little turtle charm. I use uh, uh, pliers to break off the little circle for attaching it to a piece of jewelry. And, um, and I, when I say I, I mean my husband. God love him. He does all of that kind of work for me. And, um, and then sands off the rough edge. So I'll put my little mermaid in there and that looks kind of sweet. I like that. Let's go with one of the greens next. I'm trying to be very careful about putting the um, resin over the sand because I don't want the sand to get up and walk away. I want the sand to stay where I put it to give it a water's edge feel. Other thing about trinket trays, if you slop it around the edges, um, it will come back down because resin seeks its own level, but there will be a, a, a trail of the color along the edge that you would have to go back and use your heat gun to pour away. Or, I'm sorry, to... Um, trying to do two things at once and I'm not focusing on what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Um, you'd have to use your heat gun and a scraper tool to um, zhuzh that off. So you want to try and be real careful when you pour. Um, and I'm just trying to do one of each color to make sure that the color is intense enough. And generally what I do is I alternate, whoops, turtle flipped upside down. I alternate a turtle and a mermaid. Oh, he is stuck to the bottom really well. Come on, flip. There we go. So I just want to make sure my sand and my charm is covered. I'm just going to go over this little guy a little bit. There you go. This is my other green and I think it's going to be way too similar but let's see what happens. Yeah, they're almost the same color. I'm not happy about that. I like to offer a variety of color, and this is really way too similar. Even though they're two different brands and two different colors, they're just almost the same. And I am definitely gonna have to mix up some more resin. But again, that's okay. I'd rather have not enough than too much. But I do keep little projects like trinket trays on hand um, so that I can pour something. I've got molds for pop sockets and um, I have little mermaid tails that I put a D-ring on and make into little uh, like backpack accessories. Those are fun that you can do with your leftovers. I've got a little owl mold that I'll fill up sometimes. Also, um, um, the crystals that are so popular right now. I'll do crystals. I used to make, I used to take a um, coaster mold and put the coast and put the crystals on either side and make a cell phone stand. Those were real popular for a long time. I've never seen anybody else do that and people really liked them. So I made those for a good long while. These are really, really a nice pastel color. I'm going to use my tweezers this time because these turtles tend to want to flip on me. Just drop it down in there without getting my tweezers messy. 
So you can see how quick and easy this is. It goes pretty fast. You just wanna watch the bubbles, not let the bubbles get away from you. This is my Bria Reese Pink. It's just called Pink. I wanna get up above the line of the last pieces of sand because um, I want it to seal. If I don't get above that last little grain of sand, then I'm not gonna get a good seal and it could lift. So you wanna, you wanna watch that. Like I said, it'll level out on its own. But these little minis, um, these are Fiddle and Fern brand, and you can get them at, at home. If you have an at home around you, I also find them at Old Time Pottery. A uh, little piece of sand tried to catch on fire there. That will happen. You're not careful. Um, yeah, if you have Old Time Pottery in your area, they carry the Fiddle and Fern their little um, sauce trays. And they make wonderful little trinket dishes. The round ones over here are also fit, uh, fiddle and fern. All right, let's try the blue. And then the hearts, um, I order on Amazon. They are also little sauce trays and they make perfect little trinket, little trinket trays. I hope you have a resin calculator downloaded on your phone or your iPad. Um, I usually I, I usually don't guess at how much resin I'm going to need because I'm a stickler for um, not wasting resin. It's just too expensive a medium to, uh, to not measure properly. So um, the resin calculator, it gives a square, rectangle, and round. And you just put in the dimensions and how deep you want the pour to be and it will tell you how much you'll need. All right, that's got all the colors that I have mixed up and I really like all of them. Um, I'll just show you real quick what I do with the white. I'm just gonna take my toothpick. I used to uh, put a bunch in there and use the, use the dryer, the heat gun to blow, but it really blew all over the ceramic and just made a mess. And, and then I had a lot of cleanup to do. So now I just take a toothpick and draw some little waves. That was way too much. I might have to use the heat gun after all and blow that out a little bit. But this resin will move around on its own or you can take a straw and blow, and that will create some nice waves that you have a, a lot more control over. You just need a lot of breath to do that, and um, I have COPD, and I get winded easier than I used to, so. That's easy. Now having said all of that, <laughs> I'm gonna take my heat gun and blow this around a little bit and just see what happens. And I'd like you to see how, it, I'm gonna keep it on low, but I'm just gonna move that a little bit. That's not so bad on low. This is um, freezer paper that I have down, so I'm not worried about, not too worried about catching it. 
on fire from the heat gun. See, that's kind of pretty. And we got a few ocean waves. All right. Um, I'm probably, now see what I did here? I blew my sand all around when I had it just like I wanted it. All right. My resin is going to start to cure because I've been talking a while. And so I'm going to shut up now and finish pouring. And for the sake of you watching, I'm probably, after the fact, going to speed this up so you don't have to go through the arduous process of me scraping everything around. So I'll see you when we're all done. Okay, so now we have a larger trinket tray, just for the sake of comparison. This is the heart-shaped, so this is quite a bigger size. Um, what I've done is I took some um, E6000 glue and nailed down a mermaid tail inside each one and they wanted to tip over, even though we sanded them flat, they still wanted to tip. These um, come up a little bit in the center and it just didn't want to hold. So I put um, some of my wonderful alcohol inks behind them to keep them standing up. I thought that was gonna happen, one of them. Ah, some glue got on the one, there we go. Okay, and my philosophy is you can never have enough alcohol ink. <laughs> so, good for more than just coloring your resin. So, these I'm again just going to use the alcohol inks and keep it kind of clear and pretty and uh, Simple, I don't even know that I'm gonna add ocean waves to these. I'm sure I'm not gonna add the charms because we've already got the mermaid tail in there. So once again, I'm gonna mix up some resin and get the color in it and um, we'll play some more. Okay, I've mixed up some more resin for these larger trinket trays. I mixed up um, 10 ounces and this time, let me just move one of these so I'm in camera range. I'm gonna use the Bombay in, uh, alcohol ink, India ink actually. Um, this color is much more vibrant um, than the pastels of the Bria Reese ink. So I'm just gonna start out with two drops 
because I want to take it slow and easy. So I was using up to nine or 10 drops of the other and look at the difference. That was two drops, how deep and rich that color is. And I'm just gonna test it here. Yeah, that's perfect, I like that. All right, so I'll do the same thing with the teal. This is the blue. I'm gonna do the same thing with the teal. It's two drops. Only on these, I'm not, as I said a minute ago, I'm not going to use the charms. I'm not going to do the ocean white. But I would like some sparkle in there. So I'm going to add some very fine glitter. just to give it some shimmer. Since this is something that you're likely gonna be throwing jewelry in, it'll be fun to have some sparkle in the resin along with the sparkle of your jewelry. Oh, that's got a, it's very hard to tell, but that's got a nice shimmer to it. And this is just, this is not any Fancy glitter, I probably got it at Walmart. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with just a touch more for fun. I'm a little bit OCD, I like things to be even. And I wanted a dozen of these, they only had 11 at, at home. So we're just gonna See how far this stretches and go for it. Uh, this, my resin calculator told me that I would need about six ounces for this. I wanted it thicker, so I mixed up 10. As I said, this kind of comes up in the center, so I wanted to be sure there was plenty Oh, that shimmer is so pretty. Love that. And it looks like, once again, I may fall a little short of what I actually need. Let me pour the green and see how far that goes. I think I need to... Uh, well, I don't think it's the resin calculator's fault at all. I think it's the depth that I'm pouring it is what is causing the discrepancy. Oh, I love the shimmer in that. I'm pouring these a little thicker, I think, than I put in the resin calculator. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but that's really pretty sparkle in there. And I think between the sparkle and the mermaid tail, it's it's enough. It's all we need. I definitely poured the blues too thick. That is why I'm short on blue. So I may have to get creative about how I grab some more blue. But I've got four left and I'm almost out, so I'm definitely gonna have to mix another batch. A Little bit frustrating, but not the end of the world. Just another three and a half minutes of my life.
Oh, these are so pretty. Well, the breaking news alerts on my iPad are blowing up if you're hearing that little tone. That's what that is. With so much going on in the world, those breaking news alerts go off all the time. Some days I look at them and some days I just choose not to. There we go. All right. These are definitely way thicker and I think I like the look of that. So I may go back and pour these a little deeper, but I'm gonna put you on hold while I go mix up a little bit more resin. Okay, last of the resin is mixed up and we can pour our final pieces. I'm gonna go back and make these ones that were thinner, a little thicker, because I like the look of it. And I get to decide how I like it, so that's what I think. I'm gonna thicken these green ones up a little bit too. That's just a nicer look, in my opinion. I can already tell I'm gonna have some left over because you just never get it exactly right, it seems. And that's okay. We say that's okay a lot in the art world. I seem to have a little more of the teal left than the blue, so I think I'll do this extra one in the teal. Oh, there's a little speck of dust. And I think I'll put the extra in here. Torch, get those bubbles gone. And I have this much leftover resin, so I'm going to grab, clean off my work surface here. Let's scooch all these together. without breaking them, hopefully. And I'm gonna grab a couple of heart-shaped trays. Just because I love this glitter so much, I'm just gonna do a plain pour. with the glitter. I might throw a mermaid in there. I love these little heart-shaped trays. They are so fun. They're just sweet. People love them. with the torch. Never hurts to go back a couple of times, wait about 
10 minutes, come back, double check your work again. Don't set the mermaid tails on fire. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the mermaids for these little hearts. For some reason, I always put the hearts up on, I mean, the uh, mermaids up on the left. Maybe that's because your heart's on the left and mermaids just always, I just always think of love when I think of mermaids. There we go. That is just quick and easy and we are done. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So here is the final product. These have dried overnight. Don't think they're cured. I learned the hard way as a beginner that if you stack pieces like this on top of one another, the bottom of one will imprint into the resin that it's sitting on. So give it several days to cure but these just turned out lovely. I am very happy with how they look and I know they're gonna make people really happy to have. It's a, as I mentioned before, it's a great art project to do if you're just starting out in resin um, because you really can't mess them up. It's, it, it's great for gaining confidence and experience in a small way so that um, that you can get experience to move on to the bigger projects. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Come back and see me again. Bye-bye.